I'm Chris Rogers, um, a civil engineer at the University of Birmingham and I deal with future cities. I'm Ellie Cosgrave and I'm a lecturer in urban innovation and policy at University College London. Part of my job is to explore the engineering and the future of cities and how we're going to tackle some of the world's biggest challenges right here in cities like this. Funded by the research councils, the UK research community now is developing ways in which we can engineer effectively our cities of the future. My engineering uh, therefore takes cognizance of the um, societal demands. I need to work in harmony with the natural environment, so my designs need to synthesise with those. And I need to deliver cost-effective and uh, efficient solutions. In order to do this, I need to understand the purpose of cities. If I were to go back some millennia, then the purpose of cities uh, would largely be around a place of trade, a place uh, of shelter, uh, a place with a source of clean water. And if I have those three things, then a city can start. Cities of today are very different places. They are um, busy places. There are places of business. Uh, there are places of solitude. They're an amalgam of all sorts of spaces, commercial, retail, um, open spaces, green spaces. Uh, they have industry. All of these need to uh, sit together and work together. So all of these things uh, then uh, come into the role of a civil engineer. We create infrastructure systems to allow all of this to, uh, to occur. And those systems have to be fit for purpose today, but they also have to be fit for purpose tomorrow, that is, into the far future. So we need to take uh, a cognizance of the needs of the far future in the way we do our designs today. But we need then to engage in futures analyses so that we can uh, understand better how what we create today will play out in the far future. And our research now is enabling us to create these techniques for understanding the future and engineering accordingly. But civil engineers have been building cities for literally hundreds of years now. So what's so special about right now that we need to worry or think differently about how we deliver our engineering services? Well, there are many pressures in my view. First one, really obvious one, is urbanisation. We have currently three million people moving to cities every single week across the world. And by 2050, we expect 2.5 billion more people to be living in our cities. That is a huge strain on our infrastructure and civil engineers are going to be the ones who increase that infrastructure, invest in it and make it work for those people. Now, we also have to deal with that urbanisation whilst at the same time protecting against climate change. 90% of the world's biggest cities are on coastal areas, which means they're susceptible to sea level rise. Engineers are going to be the ones who solve the problem of keeping our cities safe at that time. But as we flock to cities, engineers also has to be the ones to make sure that we don't pollute, that we don't emit so much carbon that we end up uh, creating increasing climate change. And let's remember that we're dealing with those two fundamental issues with a system of ageing infrastructure, with the transport infrastructure that just wasn't set up to deal with these kinds of things. And that's the challenge that engineers are facing. And that leads us to why we would consider the smart city. Why would we do it differently? The smart city is about making best use of information technologies to integrate into our existing systems to make them more efficient and work better for people. There are lots of key elements that characterise a smart city. One of them is the use by people planning cities of the extremely vast amount of data that we now have to understand how our cities are functioning. We can now put in IT into our infrastructure, our water supply systems for example, to know where the leaks are and to automatically fix them, to understand how logistics are working throughout the city and create traffic flows that work better for people. So, we can see when we use that data that we can create more efficient systems that are more effective for the types of activities that happen in cities whilst reducing carbon. But this issue is not one that is restricted to the UK. It's an international challenge and what we need to do then is to take the context into account. 
So if I'm now thinking of smart cities in the context of Singapore, as a geotechnical engineer, I would immediately move to subsurface solutions using the third dimension, the subsurface below cities, to provide those services to the people who need them uh, at the surface. So the context becomes important in shaping the way we do our engineering. The key message to take away from this is that civil engineers will manifestly shape our future cities. But in order to do this, we have to engineer alongside all of the other academic disciplines and work with all of the other urban professionals. Now that is exciting. It is part of my job to imagine the future of cities, so I have many fantasies about what the future of our society might look like and how technology will take us there. Ultimately though for me, I don't really mind what the infrastructure looks like. What I care about is that our cities are places that people can thrive in, that anyone can come to a city and have access to great healthcare, great education and great employment opportunities and they feel connected to one another. And that's why I'm really proud to be part of civil engineering.